Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sushant Kumar. I have secured All India Rank 872 in uh, UPSC Examination 2023. Uh, this was my third attempt, uh, including first mains and first interview. Uh, my optional is Geography. Uh, I am an IIT Kharagpur graduate, 2019 batch. I was working as an associate consultant in one of the management consulting firms, which is because uh, which is a big four company. And then in 2021, uh, approximately in 2021, I started preparing for the UPSC examination. So uh, as far as my optional score is concerned, I have scored uh, 280 marks, 151 in paper one, and uh, 129 in paper two, geography. So coming to my prelim strategy, uh, uh, for prelims, I uh, uh, it was a very uh, uh, detailed strategy. I mean, if I if I would uh, mention it, it was a very structured strategy. I used to follow active recall method. Uh, means uh, active recall is a method in which uh, you try to recall each and every uh, small fact or each and every small data in a very uh, in a very uh, structured way. Like uh, you revise it once, you try to recall it today. Then you try to recall it after 24 hours, and then you again try to recall it after seven days. So in this way, uh, a three uh, three um, three tier process has been followed in that so there is a, a youtube channel uh, I, i'm not I, i'll uh, i'm not forget i'm basically forgetting that name so in that channel there is a, a tutor who teaches about how you can uh, use this active recall method so in this method i i made an excel sheet in which uh, different uh, subjects were in different tabs and every uh, subject i made small questions like for example if you take uh, uh, take for example you know, take an example of environment like uh, what is the IUCN status of uh, elephant? So I would like to, I would write the answer in the next column that it is endangered. Similarly, uh, who publishes this report? Then the answer will be another in the next column. So these kind of uh, like I prepared thousands of questions in this one one column, and then in another column I had all the answers. So it was very easy for me to revise uh, a lot of information in a very short span of time. So this was all about my prelim strategy. Uh, and one thing more I would like to mention is. Uh, the practice, like in prelims, uh, we all know that how much practice is important. But practicing PYQs and learning from the learning from the keywords that UPSC mentions that is extremely important. Like the like the extreme statements in UPSC that all never uh, always. So these kind of statements, they there is a high probability, around ninety percent probability that these statements might get wrong. So you have to be cautious about that. But there are some statements like some or maybe so these statements has some around 50 to 60 probability so there is a uh, chances that these statements may be correct so this kind of intelligent guessing is also required while solving the uh, prelims paper so prelims paper is uh, as it has become more dicey like in 2023 prelims they have also removed that elimination strategy so now it is uh, more uh, based on the knowledge it is it is it, it requires more practice it requires more knowledge and it and it requires a very structured way of preparation so that you are very foolproof that at least you are securing the cut of marks uh, for more uh, uh, i mean for more detailed strategy i think uh, i and ashwini sir will have a, a session then we can we can talk more about it as far as mains is concerned uh, in gs1 uh, gs1 has a variety of uh, subjects uh, history geography society so different uh, different uh, subjects had different sources uh, for history i followed uh, pratik nayaksar's on on academy and then also the basic books uh, for example uh, the ncrts are there so these kind of books and uh, i used to uh, make short notes out of that and also uh, and whenever i was preparing these subjects so i used to uh, look at the pyqs like what questions they are asking and what they are expecting out of us so each and every questions, each and every answer was prepared accordingly. I prepared each and every uh, answers of the last 10 years of all the subjects, uh, either GS1, GS2, GS3, and GS4. And then I made short notes out of it. Okay, these, these are the themes that are being repeated and you have to focus more on that. So similarly for geography, geography was my optional. So GS geography is a bit, you have to tone down your optional tone while writing the GS geography, but still it is manageable. As far as uh, uh, coming to GS paper two, so it has Indian constitution and other parts. So Indian constitution, you have to remember the articles, you have to remember the case laws. So a separate list, as I mentioned in the prelim strategy that I use active recall method. Here also in means I prepared that Excel sheets in which I have uh, noted down every uh, every case, every case laws or every committee. 
and then again PYQs was again a source. I mean the syllabus and the PYQs are the uh, are the guiding light of UPSC preparation. It has to be always kept on the table whenever you are studying or whenever you are studying any topic. For example, in GS2 you have NGOs. So uh, if you look at the PYQs, if you analyze the PYQs, you will find that there are only five to six types of questions that they are asking in NGOs. Or what is the problem that NGOs are facing? What more can be done? What is the different committee's recommendation? I'm forgetting the committee. I think it is Vijay Kelkar committee. So you read the recommendations of Vijay Kelkar committee and try to bring it into your answers. So the, these kind of uh, uh, PYQ analysis and then studying accordingly can help you uh, shorten your boundary when uh, you are preparing any subject and it also help you to be very exam oriented rather than rather than getting into a bulk of strategy and uh, similarly if you go ahead with international relations again international relations uh, like international relations you don't have to dwell into the history i think uh, p365 or main 365 is enough to understand what is going on right now but whenever you are writing the answers then you have to follow uh, uh, follow like uh, uh, follow a structure of answering uh, for example in ir you have to uh, use of the current data or the current uh, MOU if it is signed between the different countries then what is the impact on India and uh, how it is going to impact the nation or the region uh, if you uh, and then you should ne also never forget about the, our diaspora in international relations because that is one thing that is very important and I always try to bring either in GS1 or GS2 or GS3 GS4 I always try to bring this diaspora angle or that uh, ethical angle in that question that if uh, if there is a war going on and if the question is on the war then you always try to bring in the war ethics in that answer so it, it gives it gives you a very uh, a very kind of unique type of uh, experience with the examiner that this guy is also talking about war ethics so it has uh, some linkage to gs4 so in this way now you not only link gs2 but you also link you also brought gs4 into answers and uh, coming to gs3 uh, gs3 is uh, a slight of uh, you can say uh, uh, the scores are a bit low on this side but um, but there is a lot of scope i scored around 87 marks in gs3 uh, this year and um, although i would not say it is a very good score but it is a decent score and uh, in this paper i followed uh, uh, i followed the strategy of remembering data and remember the uh, remembering or whatever the committees or whatever the uh, diagrams that i had in every in, in economy or in agriculture so Again, PYQs here comes very handy. If you look at the agriculture PYQ, then uh, the PYQs are very uh, organized, like pre-agriculture, you have different schemes running of the government. Again, schemes is a very important in GS3. And if you come to like pre-agriculture, uh, pre how you're preparing the land, what is the seed, what is the fertilizer, how you're going to get the credit, then coming uh, during the agriculture, how um, the uh, nano urea is being utilized, these kind of things. And then post agriculture, what is the FPO doing? Uh, what is the supply chain logistic is there? So these kind of, if you do the analysis, you will find out that there is a structure in the questions. And these structures, these themes are getting repeated. So Google on these themes, Google the PYQs, understand, read read the articles. So this then this way you can prepare a one page notes of every and every theme you can prepare one to two page notes and then you can study accordingly. Okay, okay this these are the themes and these are getting repeated again gs3 indian economy indian economy the sources are multiple sources are they were available in the internet but again uh, stick to one source i stuck to murunal sir's uh, indian economy notes that was a uh, basic notes and then again main series i was very handy in the preparation and uh, remember try to remember the themes try to remember the data the budget data uh, this year's budget each and every data point that they have mentioned even in the president's speech what uh, uh, honorable president man is mentioning these these has to be taken care of or you can it comes very handy if you have if you know the data that okay this year the r and d in, uh, in, uh, means the r and d expenditure is around uh, 1 lakh crore so whenever there is a question on okay, what is india doing or what is the vision of india's in 2047 you can always start with this kind of data that india is india is spending around 1 lakh crore this year so again coming to gs4 the gs4 ethics i scored uh, I think 117 marks in GS4 and uh, the strategy was very simple uh, for GS4 see uh, although you have to uh, whatever notes what are basic notes that you are studying that has to be uh, remembered thoroughly but each and every question that is GS4 is asked try to bring in the ethical theories like utilitarian theory or uh, uh, I'm forgetting the names Jeremy Bentham's theory or whatever theory for Buddha Buddha's middle path any ethical answer like APJ Abdul Kalam's um, 
if if he has some philosophy then try to bring in that philosophy so each and every question you write your personalized experiences you write the experiences of known ias officers or known irs officers whatever and then try to get all these uh, and try to back at these example with these kind of theories so that will give the answer a very ethical touch and uh, whenever you are reading the question try to break it down try to break the questions in two or three parts if you are if you are able to do that then you are all, then you are going to definitely fill the pages like two three pages and while you are filling the pages you have these theories in back you have these examples uh, on the hand side so this will be helpful this will be really helpful in scoring good marks and i also followed uh, strategy of drawing diagrams and ethics the uh, diagrams come very handy if you have practiced a lot of diagrams vein diagrams are handy or uh, flow diagrams are handy so these these kind of innovative techniques if you bring in your answers not in every answer but at least if you are getting it in like 7 to 8 answers it gives a different touch to your uh, answers and uh, of course examiners like it so i think gs4 uh, is a uh, gs4 uh, can be done in that way mm, case studies case studies uh, case studies are uh, i mean uh, this is one of the scoring part where you can uh, score good marks if you uh, really feel that you are ethical and you know the theories and you know what uh, what are the uh, circumstances how you are going to manage the situation so there comes your uh, inner belief how uh, how you have shaped yourself as a personality will definitely be reflected in the paper so that is one part again we'll have a session with ashwini sir and we can talk more about that uh, coming to my optional strategy uh, gs1 uh, sorry uh, the paper one so paper one is divided again in physical geography and uh, human geography so physical geography everything every uh, every subject every topic it has to be prepared thoroughly it has it has to be uh, studied by keeping the pyqs on one hand the basic books or the basic notes whatever notes you are following be it of uh, any uh, renowned coaching of or and and uh, i think ashwini sir is doing a very great job on youtube he is um, he is uh, not only giving you the <clears throat> Uh, the basics of uh, geography but also uh, trying to bring the questions trying to bring in the recent data and facts the recent figures and also he has also done a great job in uh, framing the questions or the pyqs and then trying to uh, bring in bring a how to answer that questions and i followed that i followed uh, ashwini sir one of the method like every uh, question has to start with an introduction then it has to be followed by a flow chart that that gives the examiner that and in flow chart uh, as sir used to mention in his youtube sessions that uh, a flow chart is like <clears throat> uh it it compresses a lot of information in a very short diagram and gives examiners that okay this guy knows that they, these are the geographical theories that has to be taken care of so yeah flow chart is one of the things that i used to follow in every question as sir has told and then start by answering the question like if the question is on uh, <clears throat> human geography then uh, break the question in part how when why how it can be done or uh, how uh, a city how a primate city is defined this kind of basic definition is there so keep on good doing that and uh, i didn't go with any pre mindset that i'm going to attempt a lot of uh, uh, section a question or section b question it was um, it was impromptu like when i saw the paper i found that okay uh, human geography is a part where i feel i consider myself a bit on the stronger side uh, because i have learned a lot of data a lot of facts and my theory is also very strong so my malthusian theory or new malthusian theory it was on my tips the diagrams so whenever i am writing a uh, whenever i am writing uh, answer Uh, on half page a uh, half page i will write something and then i will draw a diagram on short on the on the right hand side of the paper so like it 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 gives a flow to the examiner also that okay he is writing something he explaining something then again he is drawing a diagram to supplement that uh, supplement that paragraph so this kind of uh, techniques to write the answer was there it, everything is taught by sir on the youtube sessions and these are really great Uh, i would recommend everyone to go through that and you're going to definitely learn not only in human geography but also in physical geography because uh, i think i remember uh, there was a question on himalayas and sir has given us uh, i think three or four theories which i have drawn in that flow chart thing so that helped i think that helped and uh, there also a geological touch to that answers so that geological touch gave a <clears throat> gave a kind of tint to the answer that okay this guy has knowledge of geography as well so uh sorry geology as well so this was the fact and then coming to like uh, we uh, paper one it leads a lot of uh, uh, it can be discussed in uh, and i mean uh, it can it could have an endless discussion but again uh, you have to decide your acumen ki whether it lies in your physical geography or human geography and i think uh, mine was uh, i was very much prepared on human geography i was 60 to 70% prepared prepared on the Uh, physical geography and uh, accordingly i took my decision and while writing the paper and then the i scored around 151 marks in paper 
coming to paper two <clears throat> uh, because uh, this was my first mains and uh, i have not prepared the mapping part uh, very nicely so i forgot around uh, I, four to five data points i mean four to five map entries were unknown to me so that was a blunder that i took uh, it took me it costed me around 10 mark but still i managed to get around 130 uh, the thing was um, so it uh, so whenever when i was attempting that paper i found that okay uh, i'm not able to recall these so i didn't get bothered so i'm telling uh, the coming aspirants as well keep, don't get bothered if you don't know anything just keep on attempting the paper just go with the flow whatever coming to mind you have studied for two three years so that is that is going to get reflected in the paper so when you write the paper you write with the flow of course you have guidance of course you have uh, you have your whole knowledge or you have practice papers but again when you are writing the paper just forget everything whatever is coming to your heart whatever is coming to your mind apply it apply each and every pencil and that is going to get reflected in the marks for paper uh, for paper 2 in geography this was my strategy that uh, i have studied whole, GS papers completely. I have studied the geography nicely. So this has to be implemented. Every knowledge either of GS2 or GS3, I didn't care. If I if it if it is applicable to the question, I wrote it down. I didn't care about anything. <clears throat> so that has helped. Uh, people say that uh, the ge uh, geography paper two is uh, more like a GS paper, but I found it uh, extremely geographical and uh, I wrote the theories. Uh, I, I didn't overdo the theories, rather I tried to uh, a kind of complement the answers with the paper one theories so whenever uh, there was a question I, I i don't remember any question right now but uh, whenever there whenever there is a question related to uh, development of a city so i try to br bring in the uh, center place theory so or the primate city theory so these kind of theories uh, has to be imported from paper one and then uh, supplement it with the indian examples and indian data facts so this will give you a holistic picture that th this guy not only knows the Indian scenario, he also knows the theory, he is also trying to uh, bring in that theory in this uh, paper and then you are again explaining the consequences or the whatever the answers are there. So in this way you can attempt. So interlinkages has to be developed and these interlinkages uh, when we talk in geography optional, it has it doesn't come in one day, it takes time. It takes around three to four revisions of the entire syllabus and then only you can <clears throat> And then you can try to inter interlinkages. And one of the game-changing uh, subjects in a uh, whole geography paper is the uh, thoughts. So, uh, if you write an answer and you supplement it with one of the thoughts of of the geographical person, who, for example, Radzel or uh, any new thought like uh, possibilism or uh, neo determinism, whatever, whatever, uh, whatever is this. So, if you write that this uh, this uh, question or this this question is a uh, uh, is in a direction of uh, environmental determinism. So you write the geographical person's name. Ki this uh, environmental determinism is inspired by so-and-so person and, and we are experiencing this kind of thing in the current uh, era. So it tried to deduce the answer with this kind of concepts. So it will not put, it, it will give you, it, it will give it a very geographical touch that okay, this guy knows that paper one geographical thought is coming in, in paper two and then you are going ahead with the uh, Indian, Indian, Indian context in paper two. So everything will be managed off and again diagrams. So people say that every page has to be, uh, has, you have to draw diagrams and in every page you have to have a diagram, but I don't uh, consider it as a very good strategy. It's like, uh, don't overdo anything. Don't overdo theories, don't overdo diagrams. Just whenever it is required, you dot, I drew diagrams. Whenever it was not required, I didn't draw diagrams. I remember there was a question in which a lot of, I wrote around 45 schemes. I don't remember, I don't know why I wrote that much of schemes, but it was a question on agriculture and I, I, I broke the questions in different parts and I kept writing that government is doing this and this and this and, the, and this scheme is uh, doing this, this is the data of this scheme and I, I, I didn't have any the diagram in that question. So again, I think, so you can do it like that only. There is no need to overdo anything. <clears throat> yeah, so and uh, CSAT again coming to CSAT, uh, CSAT is uh, really important nowadays and uh, you have to find, find your acumen whether it lies in quant or reasoning or uh, it is in uh, comprehension. So try to find it which in which uh, section you are comfortable and if you once you find it then just practice just practice a lot of pyqs in that and practice in like in that format that you are extremely 98 to 99 percent accurate in solving every question you're not getting any question wrong because every question is important in csat if you are able to solve around i think 27 28 questions you are through 
and that english comprehension if uh, you are not very good with quant then english comprehension comes very handy in that and not just restrict yourself to english comprehension just try to find out the easy question in mathematics because there are some easy question in mathematics there are some easy question in reasoning so if there is syllogism so you can attempt that uh, if there is blood relations so these kind of questions are easy and you can attempt that so there is no harm in that again you have to find your acumen and then work accordingly uh, Trust uh, whatever we need. This is a very short video, and uh, I think uh, Ashwini sir will come up with a detailed Q and A session, and then we will talk more about each and every strategy in more detail. Um, so, uh, signing off. This is Shashank Kumar again. Uh, rest we will talk more about it. Thank you, and have a have a great uh, UPSC career ahead. And I wish uh, every aspirant watching this video a lot of success, a lot of happiness, and uh, you can always reach out to me. Uh, My name is Shashank Kumar, and uh, I I don't have a Telegram channel yet, but maybe in future I'll make a Telegram channel. And uh, Yashwini sir is uh, available on YouTube at Recognition IS YouTube channel. Thank you.